It's your girl, Father Long Legs. You know me, Daddy T. This is You Can Tell Me Anything, the podcast where comedians confess something they want to get off their chest. I'm very excited to have my guests on today. We actually got to meet in person in Atlanta while I was on tour, um, but unfortunately, it's just such a great dad that he had to go off and watch his kid play soccer instead of recording our pod, and then the next time I rescheduled. So now we're even, so now we finally made it work. So excited to introduce to you an Atlanta comic. He was 2019 Comic of the Year has opened for Eliza Schlesinger and Todd Glass. Damon Sumner, what's up? Wow, that intro was fire. Thank you. Um, I, I feel good about myself. Oh, good. I, I always that. like to like make it sound like a show intro. I know it's so <laughs> silly, but it's uh, I think people at home, it's like you know, when they listen to comedian podcasts, yeah. they're expecting comedian energy. You know. Uh huh. I mean? Uh huh. Yeah. I call it my podcast voice. It really annoys um. I feel like my my uh well my I was gonna say annoys my sister, but actually just last week I was she told me not to talk about it on the pod, so I'll probably edit that. <laughs> <laughs> ah! but um anyways uh no I yeah I I, well, I was very excited to have you on because I know you reached out right before I was in Atlanta and then mm-hmm. it was so fun to do your show and then it's, here we are months later but here we are yeah but damon i like to start with a good confession just for my confidants to get to know you better um mm-hmm. just a, like a good something positive no rules except for it can't be mean or negative so just a quick little humble brag so we can get to yeah. know you. is there something good you want to confess yeah um a few months ago i released my debut album i know who i am which was Very exciting. I think any great artist, specifically comedian, is you want that first moment to be great. And I'm actually going on tour starting uh, next week uh, for the album. So I'm excited about it. Congratulations. I saw your your post. I was going to say poster, but it was on a TV screen. So I guess your flyer Uh in um, Vail when I was there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, it's David. So um, if you guys are in Vail, you should go watch David. A year um, in jail. I, I pulled a, a, a little re- positive review for your album um, from okay. Showbiz Monkey. Oh. Um, it's, okay, here's a quote. I don't know this person, but I looked it up, and it's a, and Showbiz Monkey has good things to say about album. They mm. say ultimately the album speaks to the truth truth of its title. Damon Sumner is a comedian who knows who he is. He's a son who loves his mom. He's a dad who loves his kid, and he's an incredibly funny comedian. So. <laughs> Okay, showbiz. Okay. That's good. Yeah, hi, that's really awesome. Um, I, I love that, like, the, it kind of ties back to how we met because you told me you were going to a soccer championship, and mm-hmm. I didn't realize, because I didn't know you very well, I didn't realize right. that you were going to your son's soccer championship. <laughs> yes, yes. And the way you yes. said it was like, oh, we have an away game. Like, you just, like, that's how <laughs> dad you are. Like, you're, like, already we, you know, like, oh, we've yeah. got a comp, we've got nationals coming up, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you're doing that. You're like, oh, no, we're training. But yeah. uh, I was like, oh, my God. So he's like a comic and a soccer player. Damn. Like, wow. How does he juggle that? And he's trying to do his, my podcast. Like, what? And then when I was like, oh, you're playing. You're like, what? <laughs> Very true. Everybody, I think, around knew exactly what I was talking about. And you were thinking I still had athleticism from the 90s, which is kind. It was like um, the way you said it too, because you were just like, oh, sorry, we got an away game, kind of like, you know, we. I'm like, oh, I should know that you're yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the soccer team of the, I don't know, like, I don't follow. I don't even know the LA soccer team. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm fully, fully committed to being the best that I could be, which usually puts me at a soccer games uh, nine months out of the year. Wow. That, well, that's yeah. also a humble brag for your, your son because you're like, we do well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is he's a he's a great young soccer player. So it's like when I, I did it's for it. competitions. Um, you know, technically the last yeah. few months are saved for you know the, the whatever you know regionals and nationals. But it's like huh. wow, well, I got to save my parents money by not, <laughs> not making it fast. <laughs> but uh, the gas prices, the gas prices. <laughs> oh yeah, the gas. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, this podcast, before we get too into your story, I kind of like to get some background. Um, I don't know how much you know about this pod or me, but I, I love talking about therapy. And this podcast was inspired because I didn't start going till I was 
an adult and living in New York City and just being able to talk about like myself and just have someone to listen was really cool. Um, so that's sort of where the back backstory of wanting to like confess and have these conversations came from. There's, you know, no right or wrong answer, but just curious, um, Damon, like, do you go to therapy or what's your sort of ritual or routine for mm. mental health or, you know, wellness mm. and self-care? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm, I'm pro therapy for sure. I don't I don't go to therapy, but I'm definitely pro. Um, I think a few things on? I've never. Uh, I mean, if you want to include. Um, premarital but i've never went Ooh, okay. um individual i never went for my was that, individually was that a like a together choice <laughs> yeah we were on the same page about that thought it would be beneficial to kind of really just continue i mean because we got married young we got married in college um and so it was just and it was huge greatly beneficial so we love that um but now present tense 35 year old man with one good knee um <laughs> i my Peloton bike behind me is a big thing to kind of just put some music on and just kind of sweat and just kind of listen to yourself. Um, and then I also love, I also love like rides. Like I'll just take a ride and just like, let the windows know. down. Okay. Like driving. <laughs> it's funny when you said that, I thought maybe because we're talking about kids, but I thought uh -huh. like, like a roller coaster ride. And I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, I need my I need my my uh, mental health to be free. I don't need to pay you six nine ninety nine to get it's in. Just like imagining you. Actually, it's funny because <laughs> when I was in Atlanta, when I saw you, someone invited me to go to Six Flags, and oh yeah, was, like literally, they they were a group that had um the season passes. So mm. in my mind, I'm like, I guess maybe like it's a thing <laughs> in Atlanta. <laughs> it, it is. It is. Uh, if you're, are you into amusement parks and in roller coasters that you're laying? I mean, I like them. I mean, I wish I went to them more in LA, they're all over, but it's just time-wise. Oh. I had an annual pass for Disney, like my first year here, but like mm -hmm. the week after I got it, I got a full-time job and, which is like a good thing, but yes. I ended up using it maybe four times in the year. And two, two of those were like half days I pushed myself to go so that it wouldn't be a waste. waste. <laughs> <laughs> so I like them in theory. Maybe when I have kids, I'll go more. I respect it, I respect it. <laughs> Wait, I want to ask about the um, the uh, premarital therapy because me and oh, my yeah. boyfriend have talked about this and something that's come up on the pod before, but I very, very like active or I'm very like pro going to couples therapy mm. at any stage of a relationship, even, mm -hmm. you know, even when it's because it's like going to therapy by myself. I'm already like, oh, there's so much work to do. Yeah. And my boyfriend, well, after we started dating, started going because I kind of got to the point where I was like, your life is great and you, you're doing a great job. But if we end up together and I started being like, oh God, I kind of, maybe it will happen. I'm like, I can't really see myself long-term with someone who's not going at all. I'm curious, like, did you have that model in your life? Like uh, people around you were doing it or where did you get the idea? Or you were just sort of like, let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I, um, I think one, I think it, it was, like I said, a huge benefit. It was great just to be able to be with some uh, body and your partner and just kind of process through things. So my wife and I, we have, which isn't, you know, is what it is. We have a, a podcast about marriage and relationships. And on I there, we talk gone. about. People are going to want to hear it. <laughs> it's, it's called Summing Up with the Sumners. Summing Up with the Sumners. Oh, and yeah. Um, and uh, and we and one thing we say on there a lot is it's kind of this running joke of on paper, marriage has no business working. On paper, <laughs> you have two people, yeah. two different backgrounds, two different, you know, just potentially the way they were brought up and thoughts. And then you come together and be like, hey, let's make this work for 60 years. And <laughs> we just try to put everything together in this crock pot and let it stew. And with that. When you have, when you talk about, you know, premarital or just couples therapy in general, there's this, there's this great opportunity to continue to try to make this thing work that shouldn't work on paper because you have a third perspective, you have a third voice. And sometimes, in my opinion, I think it's great to be in a different context, literally just a different setting yeah. and things. Sometimes you can hear things differently. You could have told me this in the car. You could have told me this at the park. When I hear it in this quiet, calm space where we're really focused, then I can really maybe hear you and be more in tune and be more intentional with listening, with processing, right? And so all that to say, um, I, I highly recommend it for, for any couple who's thinking about it. Wow, I love that. I love the way you say like being in a new contest because 
um, this this book I read about <laughs> that my therapist recommended um, by Stan Patkin, who writes about like like uh, it's called Wired for Love, but it, it's very interesting about like sort of couples relationships and sort of mm. our hardwired patterns. But he talks about like having a space to do it because oftentimes like picking a fight in the car, it's like one person's distracted because they're driving, you know, mm -hmm. and also maybe mm -hmm. just even not in the car, they're distracted because they don't want to have the convo. Right. But if you're in therapy and you know, like this is the hour that I'm doing it, there is this more like space for listening and a space to know you'll be listened to. And I think mm -hmm. that does make a difference. Like there are times yeah. when I want to be a good listener, but I'm just so distracted. I'll tell my boyfriend, like, I, I can't do this right now, but in a polite way, like I want, yeah. because I want to hear you. Yes. Because like, oh, I don't want to do this. It's like, oh, I'm like really, really okay. stressed about this, this and this. And I want to be full attention. Is it okay if we like, like- Timing. Timing is a huge part of communication, especially when you're talking about having important, serious, you know what I'm saying, necessary conversations. Don't talk to me at 10 p.m. when I'm falling asleep. Like that's not a wise time, right? If I come home from a hard day of work and I throw my bag down, ah, this isn't a time to bring up the budget. Like you have to be intentional of when you really want to get into important conversations. I can't remember who said this, but the, the idea you, when you mentioned business, I've heard um, someone else use the metaphor. I think it was another comedian on a pod. Hmm. I want to say it was like girls got to eat, which uh, I low key listen to white girls talking about relationships too much. Um, but I, but they were talking about it being a business in that like doing one-on-ones. And I like that a lot. Hmm. Like, yeah, you said 60 years, which I think is funny because even within families, like parents and children don't even have good relationships for 60 <laughs> years. So it is like, and businesses fail. You know, I've never even been in school for that long. So just thinking about how you have to allow yourself to change within it. So yeah, I love that. Um, Absolutely. I, okay, but I have one more question because I was Please. looking at your bio and I saw that you uh, you helped open Kung Fu Comedy Club and I performed uh, there once and yeah. I want to know more. So for listeners mm -hmm. who don't know, Kung Fu Comedy Club is, was, I don't know what's going on anymore, but because, uh, uh, well, we won't get into politics, but um, it is a comedy club in Shanghai and uh, I think in like 2016, 2017, I was out there to do like, mm. a commercial and and then just wanted to do some stage time. So I, I, I just dropped in on like a random day. But oh, okay. I really liked the vibe, like to have it set up like a club and every, like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It, it's a really cool, cool thing to do. But I'm so curious about what brought you to China and how you got involved with that. Sure, sure. So I'll, I'll make the short, a long story short. Mm -hmm. um, so I started stand up and teaching in 2010. 2010 was one of the craziest years of my life. Stand up teaching, stand up teaching and becoming a father all happened in 2010. Oh, wow. And so in 2012, um, we're like, hey, let's find some adventure. And teaching allowed us to go teach abroad. I taught with Disney English. And over there, I was like, well, I'm a stand up, obviously, two years in, not knowing anything. Let's do comedy in China. I connect with some great uh, comics. Um, and so to uh, Andy and Turner, they were kind of like the big dogs. Uh -huh. And then like four of the comics, we come alongside them. We help put together shows. We kind of help put together and kind of, they found this dope venue. We kind of help cultivate it as host and just kind of creating, we were doing shows like, I was in there from 2012, 2013 for about a year and a half of like trying to help build the first mainland comedy club in China. Um, it was a really dope man. Like put my, my pictures framed the on the wall. Like, you mean, right? I mean, not, it's yes, not the yes, 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 be speaking. Yes. And uh, we cut ribbons and there was all article. It was a whole thing. It was okay. crazy. Um, but it was one of the most pivotal moments of my comedy career uh, for a few reasons. Um, but yeah, it was dope. I was there. I got a chance to like travel around to different cities with them and amazing, amazing experience. I'm hoping we'll see get back there one day soon but um but yeah that was that yeah that's awesome yeah one day i'll go back maybe i don't know we'll see I, <laughs> too many things but yeah I, yeah, I, yeah. I, said, I don't know if i've actually said this on the pod but I'll, i can tell you but now because please it's not, it's not a secret but my great grandpa um was mm. a war general in world war ii and he mm. like helped fight with the allies and then you know, obviously left or fleed uh china to taiwan when the communists took over but he has a palace there or like a mansion that's still there and it's recently found out that it's preserved as like a historical monument so i've mm. to go back and see it but i also part of me is like i don't know i think i have very mixed feelings about it sure sure the locals still kind of see it as this historical thing but there's this mm. like 
I think there's a bit of anger still in me. It's yeah. okay to say that, but yeah, and yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. you know, whatever. But anyways, but maybe one day I'll make it back there. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Who knows? Well, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we will get your confession. All right, we're back. What a lovely break, Damon. The time has come. Is there anything you would like to tell me? Yes, there is. So I've only told maybe two other people in my life this. So this is big time right here. Okay. Oh, so, so when I was, uh, I'm the oldest of three boys, um, single mom, three boys. And when I was in middle school, my mother graduated from cosmetology school, which was a big moment. Hairstylist, big moment for her trying to start this small business. And um, her classmates had this like black figurine made of her in her cap and gown. Just this little adorable little black little girl, little cap and gown, just beautiful. Just could find those in, at any bazaar, amazing time. And it sat on our, uh, I don't know, we had like this huge diamond shaped like thing. I don't even know what to call it, but it had like picture frames and plants. Okay. Like, like a little decorative. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so she had it there. And I remember one How day she was- you? Oh, you said middle school, right? Yeah, yeah, so I'm like 12, yeah. And so she's going to work one day and we're playing, we're wrestling. WWF was big oh at this God, time. I'm so nervous for this doll. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fighting, I'm wrestling my brothers and we bump over the figurine and it falls and breaks. <sighs> and literally the world stops. Uh -huh. And we are petrified, we're sad, we're disappointed, all these feelings. And we're like, what are we going to do, right? We could confess. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, <laughs> so we, are your brothers and like what they right. are. Kind of so like, I'm 12. Like, my middle brother is eight, and my youngest brother is six. Oh, okay, okay. So you're yeah. not like the you're the yeah. leader, and they're yeah. coming to you for facts. Yeah. Facts. My youngest brother's crying. My middle brother's thinking we're gonna get a whooping. It's a whole ordeal. All right, <laughs> we're in shambles, uh -huh. and and so I'm like, all right, well, we gotta fix this. So I get some Elmer's glue. Shout out to Elmer's. And I guess how much glue ah. and some and some and some um clear tape. Oh my god. And we just and we like take 45 minutes to try to put this Humpty Dumpty back together. Oh. But then on top of that, we so we get it, we kind of but we have to restation everything so it's now in the yeah. back. So it was like I mean to put it together, but like obviously it was uh, clear. Obviously. <laughs> like if you look at it, you're like, huh, that don't is that leaning? Does that have a lamp? <laughs> Um, we yeah, move God, plants. <laughs> yeah, we move plants around. We put my grandma's picture frame up front. We move it to the back. And to this day, she's never known. She's never asked about it. No or way. like a great parent, like a great parent, she probably found out and was like, mm, kids are trash. <laughs> and one of the two. I need to ask her about it, but oh I've never God. told her. I mean, because when you say Elmer's glue, it, I, I am imagining it didn't stick very well. I mean, and I'm not not to like assume that the 12 year old you was not dexterous, <laughs> but like, I just was like imagining kind of like kids kind of putting, there's like pieces, it looks Frankenstein. But mm. when you put it back up there, were you like, how truthfully to the 12 year old you were you like, oh yeah, it looks good. Uh, if you kept, if you looked in, in movement, if you were moving and looked, you would have got away with it. But if you would have stopped and be like, oh, look at that. It would have been a wrap. We would have been dead. <laughs> we would have been dead. That's why we had to move the right? plants. We had to, yeah, there was a little, there was like clear tape around it. We had to move things. So like you could see it, like, oh, there is in the background a little bit now. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. It went, it went from being Beyonce to Michelle. And so we had to put oh, it in the oh, back oh. a little bit. You understand? <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm glad you didn't say Solange because we don't, we respect, okay? We respect Solange. We don't, she's not a punchline. But um that is very funny. I 100% think your, your mom knows either that because there's only two options very right? well I mean there's the option where she's like just like she knows it was you guys which is like very sweet but but between the option of her knowing and not knowing it's either she if she doesn't know that would mean it didn't matter to her at all mm. which means that that wasn't that important so because <laughs> you know she didn't look at it one single time this whole time yeah. like and yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like show anyone so that's why I feel like you're off the hook because she definitely either knows or didn't care that much about it. I cared more about you. But it was. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's true. I am actually want to get in the mind of you as a twelve year old, like because what must have been like 
killing you? Or did you feel like we did this together? We're in it together. Swear not to tell. Mm. And, and then that was it. Or did you like walk by it and look and then were you ever like, Ooh, like, or did you hint or did you like, you know, were you scared your brothers would say something? Yeah. Yeah. All, all of the above. Right. So my brothers and I, especially at that time, very close. And, you know, I really took being the oldest um, out of necessity and because it just kind of how the, the our house was, I took being the oldest brother very seriously. So mm -hmm. when it broke, I had this floor responsibility of creating the plan. My brothers, again, were just like, what are we going to do? We understood that the of what this represented in a sense of like, this was a big moment for her to get this and yada, 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 right? But if I'm being honest, as a, if I'm thinking back to being 12, I, I wasn't necessarily so much worried that my brothers were going to crack. I was just worried that my mom was going to feel like I let her down because she was at home. She was gone working hard for us, right? We're wrestling. She wasn't a huge fan of us wrestling. And then we broke something and tried to cover it up. So it was all of that in my 12 year old body was going through wow. puberty for like, for like Cause you were taking month. on that responsibility. And there is that element of like children. I mean, that story is like, very relatable and that children always make mistakes. Not always, but sure. we all have a moment where we yes. make mistakes and that's part of growing up. And even if, you know, you did get upset or your mom did get upset, that is like, even I can, you know, point to countless times when I did do something wrong, my mom got mad and we went through that. So mm -hmm. it's, it. but then on top of that, there's a layer that you were also acting like as a parent in that situation. So you had to both be the child, like messing up, learning the lesson very fast and then be yeah. the parent and like, kind of like forgiving yourself and then just doing what needed to be done to not cause a fight, which is like, <laughs> wow, that's like very mature. Oh, I, I yeah, I had to grow up very quick. Um, you know what I mean? Like I, I walked myself to school in kindergarten. Like it was a whole, it was just a life that I lived and life we had to live for my mom to, you know, to hold it down for us. So yeah, there is an element of kind of playing both sides of that street there. But, you know, when I bring it up, you know, what's interesting is, I'm going to go to a tangent. We can go there and yeah, not go there. Sure. But I, I I always am fascinated about memories. Memories really intrigue me because we have memories where it really matters to us. Yeah. And there were other people there in that moment that if you either bring it up, it definitely doesn't have the same impact or they might not even remember it. And this is a moment I've brought up to my brothers and they're like, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, big guy. <laughs> And I'm like, what? I was in shambles internally for 60 days and you don't remember? I'm intrigued if you can think on the time, I'm putting you on the spot. If there's a memory you can think of that kind of fits that mold. Definitely. I've had, yeah, I um, I will bring up, well, okay. This is where I'm like, just so for back back context, the Please. sister thing, because I talked about last pod was like, I have a twin and, and mm -hmm. she's also like trying to get out there and do music and stuff. And Love it. recently was telling me that she didn't want me to talk about her much, but I hopefully, if she hears us, this is okay, because childhood, I feel like there's no way around, like we were twins, there's no mm. way around these stories that had happened, but I want to respect as an adult now, present her, I'm not, I'm trying to like let her control who she is to the public. Um, if I'm wrong, whatever, I think I'm, a, I mean, I'll take the consequences. I, I have to preface it because I just made a whole speech about how I'm not going to talk sure, about it. Sure, sure, sure. But it's also very strange to be like, do you have any childhood stories? And I'd be like, not a single one where my twins are involved <laughs> because we were literally twins. But yeah, that that is a thing that can happen once. Like um, a couple of times there are stories like that. But one that I remember bringing up to her was one time um, my, well, my family, we were very little, like maybe like four or five, like so young, like, but not, mm. we were very, barely aware of like, even, you know, when you're a kid and you just run around naked, kind of, we're just mm. at the age where you're like cl clothed, but you're not yeah. ashamed. And I say that because then in this, we had this party, like family friends and one of our other family friends who was like two years older came by early and we were all like, we used to like shower together and sleepovers, whatever, like kids. But it was yeah. just at that age where I think they, he was like a boy. So very like, kind of like playful, like naughty, mm. but not like, not, not ill intention, but he thought it'd be funny yeah, to yeah. like, Bring, bring a whole conga line upstairs and open the door while my sister was like, my mom was like sh bathing her <clears throat> and my mom got very upset. And I thought it was funny to lead them up, but I didn't know mm -hmm. why. Like he, he thought it was funny. Cause I think he was at the age where it's like, ha 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 shower naked. And I yeah. was like, Ooh, like 
uh, let me take you upstairs because I want to like be the leader to lead to this thing. And yeah. I remember feeling a lot of shame and embarrassment. My mom like mm. got very upset. And then of course, immediately, I think he knew why. So like, she was like everyone out and he went down and he was like very like, rah, rah, rah. but then I was like, didn't really understand. And I felt bad and I felt mm. bad that I made my sister feel bad and my mom feel bad. Yeah. And I brought that up as an adult, like 2020, like I was going through memories that, and during the pandemic, like she didn't remember that, but I don't know. It's wild because. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, oh my God, it was a core memory for me. Yeah, Because yeah. it involved the moment where like, I felt I betrayed her and also mm -hmm. that like my mom, and I did look back and I was like, I did do something wrong, but if I wouldn't have learned that line, like I'm glad I learned that line. Right, that, yeah, right. You know, like it was kind of safe to learn it there, but yeah, it's like, I did touch the hot stove and I remembered it. But and they, um, your sister my, did not or your mom did not. <sighs> You know, my, my sister did not, um, wow. I have to ask my mom again. I don't know if she remembers mm. it the way I did, because I'm sure she was just like, I don't think it was that serious because we were all children, but I think she sure. wanted me to know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the thing that she's learning now, like, this right. is what, you know, but it, and maybe like, I hadn't seen my mom be angry that much, you know, like, cause I hadn't made those kinds of mistakes yet, but I have a hypothesis why your brothers don't remember us because Please. to you you saved them not save them but you you did the um calculations of making it not traumatic for them because mm. you made them feel safe you when they were crying and that's a healthy emotion to have is crying yeah. like yeah feeling feelings and crying is not bad and they're actually Period. good if you have them in the moment but they become traumatic if you're like having to hold on to them mm -hmm. and you in some way had to hold on to a little bit of it and then you were the one that led them to problem solve, but you didn't really know if it would be okay. But I think in that moment, your brothers trusted you and then it was okay. And so they kept trusting you. And so maybe it all processed as just like, we trust mm. each other and he led us. To, and so like, in some ways it was, you succeeded in the moment, given what happened, you know? I don't know, have you ever looked at it that way? It's like, obviously, yeah. you, wanna, you wanna be like, I, I made not. a mistake, but like, what do you do after the mistake? Did you handle yeah, it yeah. The, the right way? And it sounds like you did it in the most optimal way where there was the least mm. amount of psychological damage to your brothers. This is a good thought. These are, well, I need to pay you for that session. <laughs> uh, it was, no, I've never thought about it. I've always, you know, some memories kind of, uh, it, it's, a, it's a memory that I hold lightly but it, it taught a lesson, but no, there could be a lot of truth into what you're saying there about from their perspective, right? It's, you know, if I'm six and uh, we, we wrestle, we break this, my older brother kind of fixes it. Mom never gets me in trouble. I bet I'm back on the bike with fruit snacks, right? Big brother saved the day, shout out to Damo, keep moving. Like from their perspective, I, to be honest with you, being very frank, I've never really thought about it from their perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought they all had the same type of emotions I was having internally probably not the case um but that's so, normal because you were at the yeah. age where you're just starting to learn like even some people as adults never learn to see other perspectives oh but yeah because you were able to that's why i think siblings are really good to have but like if you're able to regulate emotions you kind of learn by doing it where you kind of don't you go too far when you're a kid like yeah. you've right, right. done too much like there's probably element there's probably versions of that story if you confessed all three together or whatever there's many versions where you it would have been okay. Like the, the mm -hmm. bottom line mm -hmm. was your mom loved you unconditionally. And so that maybe was a deep fear as a kid. You're like, oh God. But really, no matter what happened, you would have learned the truth, which is she loves yeah. you unconditionally. Yeah. And that would have been okay. But you kind of learned it in a way that they didn't even have to go through that like struggle. But mm -hmm. I imagine that in the moment they were crying because they, they had that like fear. Maybe they couldn't word it, but then you normalize that feeling and you, yeah. made it, you normalize making mistakes to them. So they were like, okay. And you know, I'm guessing you guys were more careful after that. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we, we were. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah. So in some ways, like it kind of helped your mom. Like, I don't know, maybe you're, I don't know who knows. I'm sure your mom knows. I'm so curious if your mom, when she found out, it was probably like that um, night. <laughs> like I'm, I'm sure a... you guys acted differently. Like parents, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you know? Like it was like, I don't know Were you, yeah. Were you like very aware? Like she's going to find out. Very aware. We were very aware for probably a few weeks. And when, you know, things kind of dissolve over time, but like, we probably didn't even walk by that object for like, you know, the first, first few weeks or whatever. 
the case may be. I'm going to ask. I'm actually going to drop off the, the kid to the see their grandparents this week. I'm going to ask. I'm like, hey, did you ever figure out? I'm going to see what she say. I'm she a, I'm a, uh, Why is still uh, she keeps She keeps a lot of things. It's probably in her like storage somewhere. She's moved she's around a lot. It. If she's picked it up and put it somewhere else. <laughs> Like, unless she's like, oh, I guess like the midnight trolls woke, the elves woke yeah. up. That yeah. was, that's even creepy. Like every other possible scenario is creepier where like a ghost went <laughs> in and fixed it. <laughs> oh my God. But I am so curious. That would be a fun conversation because it's, I think hearing your mom's perspective will be interesting, but I think she'll also, um, hearing it from you will also be really touching because how much you went, how, the, tr the, the part that you said that really touched me was how you knew how important it was to her. Like, mm. I'm sure those those feelings have been expressed through your relationship over the years, but I maybe making her remember, like, she'll see you as a kid when you say that, you know? Mm -hmm. You see yourself as you. Like, yeah. you're always you. But I, I think that's really sweet, like, as a mom to be like, oh, my God, this 12-year-old boy who, like, I was raising, like, in her mind, she'll see how young you were and then be like, he saw me and how much mm -hmm. it mattered to me. So I don't know. Yeah. But that's really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like the in-depth analysis. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. I really love to like uh -uh. break That's things good. down. Well, I, a big part of why I like doing confessions too is because I always feel like I have a lot of like hold on to a lot of feelings uh -huh, or uh -huh. self-doubt and yeah. I overanalyze. But um, I try to make it like as some of the conventions can be really fun. Some can be dark, but I'm always like, it's no shame, like no judgment. Mm -hmm. So right. I never come at it with like, oh, my God, what? Like, it's more like, oh, my God, what happened? And then, OK, yeah. let's talk about it. Um, <laughs> have like you it. ever now I'm curious about the memory thing. Have you ever been on the other end of that where like you were in someone's mm. memory, like a pivotal memory that you didn't like whether maybe you were there, you do remember, it, but it, you didn't remember it like being that. Impactful. Uh, I mean, that probably sounds like 50% of our marital uh, spats, um, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, you know, you said this, I was like, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, apart from apart from that, that's a good question. I have I have not had someone like give me a proposition of a memory where to my recollection, I'll be like, man, I don't really. I don't really remember that, but that's a really good one to think about because I have, you know, memories are so strong for us, like especially memories that were great or terrible, like, um, like they really matter. Like there's some memories, like I just know, I know similar to this, we know my mom probably knew and found out. And I have a, I have a lot of other memories like that, but we've never had a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. We've never brought it up to each other. So I am intrigued on that, but I can't, I can't uh, think of one. You got yeah, one that comes to your mind? Uh, I bet your mom has a lot about you. Yeah, there's one, but as a child, I mean, this one, I was too young to remember, but my mom brings it up a lot. And when I think uh. of it, I'm probably, like, it probably didn't happen that way in my mind as a baby. Mm. But I, when I had heart surgery, my mom always tells me, like, the moment that they had to send me off to this, like, operating room by myself, like, you know, mm. I, I'm in the little bed, I'm like, 10 months old and- Right, right. And, um, she said, she just describes, like, wa watching my, like, them wheel me away and then me like laughing and then suddenly stop laughing like looking at them like huh <laughs> like I didn't cry I was just like mm. in the way she describes it and I may have been a bit of projection who knows like I don't know I would love to say I was such a complex baby with th so many complex emotions so many so many I, emotions I feel like I would just had three you know hungry need <laughs> food, you know sleepy um I'm sure I was like huh what's happening I don't think I my guess is I don't think I was that aware to be like oh, my parents are sending me away. I'm going into surgery. But I think they knowing what it was, like every time she tells that story, she'll like tear up and, you know, be like, and then that's when you saw us like, oh, why are you taking me? And and I, I like when she tells that story because I'm always like, oh, it's like I can t tell how much she loves me, but it is kind of funny because I'm like, yeah, I don't remember that at all. Like, I, I'm, if anything, the moment that was probably traumatic in my surgery, I don't remember, but is probably the actual surgery because that's where... Yeah as I be become older and done more like trauma therapy, the body sense memory comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the that actual feeling on a baby's body is honestly probably gonna supersede any sort of like expression right. that I yeah. saw five minutes before. So so it is interesting though, because it's here, I'm glad that she has that memory because it helps piece the puzzle of life together, you know, when people yeah. have different um, perspectives on who you are, because you start to yeah. see yourself as like, not just an eye, but just as a, I don't know, like 
when you see yourself in the world as a kid, you're just, you don't see yourself back. You're just like, I see the world. And now I feel yeah. like as an adult, I see the space I take up a little more mm-hmm. and how mm-hmm. it interacts with other people. Yeah. Now that awareness, that awareness is a, is a ongoing discovery for each human, right. And just continue to figure out both on the inter- internal level, internal level that, on the external, like as a, oh, as a woman, as a man, as a human, as a person, right? Of how much and how little, oh, this is a moment where I really kind of took up a lot of space in this setting, right? Or this is a moment where, you know, I felt like I shrunk down and really kind of wasn't able to really flex my full self, if you will. And so that navigation, and it changes over time because we're constantly evolving and changing as human beings too, right? And so it's quite fascinating this journey we're on. Yeah, well, I love the way you said you phrased. I feel like you also very have a very good way of uh, putting things that I'm trying to express, but like a little more smartly. Because <laughs> when you said the space thing, because I'm like just thinking physical space, but what you yeah. talk about shrinking down and taking up space, and I literally think about like in that moment, like the baby is the smallest thing mm-hmm. in that room, but it's yeah. the thing that bring is the reason why all those doctors are there. Which is really interesting because yeah. I don't think of like, you know, my soul or my whatever it is that, I, you know, is the essence of me as having space. Mm. But I also don't think of my body growing. And obviously I was much smaller then, but right. in fact, I wasn't like, oh, and I felt smaller, you know, like mm-hmm. you, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. bigger or smaller based on how old you are. Right. Not really, right. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, I don't know because it's like maybe like if I look really far back I'm like oh yeah there you know th- if you went through a growth spurt or you like yeah there was an awareness of getting a butt and having like not it wasn't overnight but suddenly being like ooh, I this is an asset which as a kid I didn't feel which hopefully you know that would be strange but it was never like me I'm moving in a big way you know I don't know does <laughs> Now say it in ways that people can understand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Okay. Well, I do have a game to end on, and it's kind of Ooh. related to all this. So um, uh, let's do it. Because it's based on, it. well, I know that you you're, you talk about um, being a dad and your comedy, and you also have a YouTube show called Better Dad. Um, so I sort the of research the research you bring yes, to this table. I know, but I didn't know you had a relationship podcast. Oh, hi. Oh, speaking See? of dad, this is just, the last going on professional podcast, and I got children walking into the room. I oh, you. I love I it. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> sorry. We had we had a special guest appearance by 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 Damon's daughter, and it was very cute, but um. <laughs> Okay, but we are professionals. Okay, we are so professionals. this is called um, Pass Down or Pass Up. And mm. it's basically, okay, so as we've discussed, you know, some things we learn from our parents. Um, but, you know, just because you're older doesn't always mean you're wiser, as I've learned from watching TikTok and Congress. So there is a lot we should learn from our parents, but also sometimes they can learn from us too. Like, I'm glad I listened to my mom when she told me to sit up straight because otherwise I definitely have scoliosis by now. And I'm glad that my mom learned from me when I told her therapy is not evil um, because I think that one benefited us both when she started going. So in this game, I'm going to just like, these are just general sort of well-worn adages that we've learned growing up. And Mm -hmm. just tell me if you think it should be passed down to the next generation or passed up. Like maybe we can let them figure out a better way. Like I'll give you an example, you know, the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. That's something Mm -hmm. we learned. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that one passed down, but you know, Mm -hmm. if you think they have a better way, we could pass Mm -hmm. it up and see what they Mm -hmm. think. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, when you say pass it up, you mean, to be clear, pass it down, pass it down to my kids, younger generations. Pass up, it's like, yo, go teach, go teach the old Oh, no, so pass down, yeah. Keep passing it down to your kids. Like, you know, pass down. Pass up is like, you know what? We can scrap that one. You got, like, pass it down. Got it. Maybe they'll have it. It's not that it's not. Pass it up. Got you. Maybe they got a better. Let them them figure out a better. (laughs) Got it. I'm with you now. Revision. Okay. All right. So first one, always eat your vegetables. Always eat your vegetables. Yeah, we passing up. We passing up on that one out here. I, I listen. There's really three good vegetables in each street, and there's about 20, 20 that has too good of a PR. And yeah, we pass. Okay, yeah, that's fair because it's more about you know balance than the vegetables itself. Um, okay, don't do drugs. <laughs> you this can is, interpret okay. these how you will. You know, age appropriate, this is, whatever. This is all right. So. 
I'm going to say pass up with this caveat. I think most people, mm-hmm. most people probably can do some things well. That's one. Mm-hmm. Two, I think there's too many people who do it poorly and it has grave consequences. So if I have to, it's like, you know, it's like, don't, don't dive in the pool. It's like two people did it too bad. Now nobody's yeah, diving in the pool. True. And so I just, the, the concept is just tough. So sorry, team, we got to find some fun somewhere else. We're passing it up. Yeah, no, I agree. Cause I feel like that one is one, or oh, you mean pass down or pass up? You, or, want, you want to teach them that. Yeah. Yes, yes, I want to be yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, I will say my caveat is I feel I was raised thinking there was no, like it was ba- evil to touch it at all. And then um, similar, the similar for way, sure. I, I feel that there is a, that I feel that I uh, found the own truth, which is like it, learning about, it, it's hard because not everyone has that personality, but learning right. how to have that balance would have yes. been more helpful, I think, to some people I know that mm-hmm. maybe shared in my childhood, but then found it later and like went extreme. So mm-hmm. that's my only, how I yeah. feel. Yeah, maybe. And, I don't know. and also we need to find some different words because there's tears to drugs. And we need yeah. to, we need some different word. There's drugs and then there's drugs. And it's like, yeah. nobody should like, mess be with. Be careful when you're doing drugs. And then here are the ones that you should definitely not do unless for some reason Ooh. you are already there and there's no other option, but probably that means you've gone too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, the nine to five job. So I, I couldn't think of a good adage for this, but you know, just the idea that's like, you know, to be a contributing member of society, you have to work mm. nine to five, mm. pay your taxes, oh, yeah. you know, start yeah. early, that, that, that whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, grind. Yeah. Pass that all the way up. Boo. Pat, blow that up immediately. <laughs> yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Okay. Uh, bros before hoes. <laughs> Bro, the first time I've never said those phrases out loud. I just see a little puka chain. Well, I guess if you, I mean, it's, like a, it's the spirit of, so, you know, I know it's kind of gender. So, you know, there's no, no not, the, the thing is, there's no non gender way of saying this because I do think it's very tied to that binary way of viewing. But, you know, dicks before. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. That, that whole pass, thing, you know, like, you know. <laughs> we're passing that up too. I need yeah. us to rethink that. Agree. I don't trust either one sometimes. of them. Bros are hoes. Sometimes hoes are bros, you know? How about that? Okay. <laughs> it's, what are you going to do then, right? Um, what are you going to do then? I agree. Okay. Um, no pants, no shoes, no service. I don't know. I, that was the closest thing I could think of to a dress code one, but kind of just the idea that there's like, you know, there's a work attire, there's school mm. attire. Yeah, Honestly, no. I think there is a level of like public decency, Decent. but yes. you know, we're talking more just, you know, like you have to wear your work clothes to work, you have to wear, you know, you can't yeah, wear yeah. casual clothes and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, no, yeah, we're passing that all the way up too. If I was running a small business and literally you came in to my bakery shop and went to buy a dozen of my donuts just because you didn't have a shirt on, which I could literally see outside my building or at the <laughs> beach, then I'm like, I'm losing money, big dog. So like, I'm no shoes, I don't care about, this floor is messy, that's on you. So I want your money. I get in it. and get out. Pass oh my god, up. that's great! I never even thought about that. Way. It's like the the whole illusion that's like, yeah, they're still gonna have no shirt outside, but inside they will make you Ooh. money. <laughs> so that is so silly. I love that. Okay, final one. Um, do as I say, not as I do. I've heard this one a lot more from our parent generation, less mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. ours. But I'm curious, sort of like, what's yeah, what's your take, and what do you think the next generation? Or do you yeah, think something uh, that you feel like you're going to tell your kids? Well, no, I'm, I'm passing that up too. I really, it's a, I've heard that a, a good bit as well. And I think it's really interesting because it's like, all right, I'm going to say this. And I think, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think people are like intentionally like, I'm just going to do the complete opposite and live my life and you better do the opposite. <laughs> I think it's like, I think what's better, in my opinion, is to constantly teach this mindset that one, parents and adults aren't perfect, right? It, I don't know about you growing up, but adults in any context, teachers, principals, coaches, it was like they could do no wrong. And that is not the, the, the climate we teach over here at my house. Like we're constantly showing them, oh no, we make mistakes. We make errors. We're constantly learning and growing, et cetera. 
more so than just do as I say, not as I do. I want you to see in the process. I want you to see my problem solving journey in the midst of this right here. So we pass it up. I think we can make that better. I love that. That's a great way to phrase it. Like I've never heard that um, as an active way to teach your kids. It's just like start from like, hey, I'm learning with you. Like I'm a, I'm more advanced. Like it's like you you're in kindergarten, I'm in college. Yeah. So you might want to listen to what I think, you but might. I'm just another student in life. And I think that's yeah. a great way to phrase it because you know it's not like don't listen to me at all. It's just like maybe I am trying to learn these lessons too. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Oh, this is so fun. Um, this I'm was so, great. I can't wait to listen to your full album. Um, so this is the place to plug everything and let the okay. confidants know where to find you, see you on tour, or find your show dates, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this was a blast. I appreciate you having me on for sure. Um, and and staying with me. We we could have dropped the ball and let this go, but we didn't. No, I yeah. And then the last one was on me for yeah, but we we no did worries. it. It was worth it. We got it done. Uh, but yeah, you can um, follow Mess With Me over on um, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm out in these streets. Uh, Damon Jr. 2, D-A-M-O-N-J-R, the number two, Damon Jr. 2. Like I said, uh, the album is out now everywhere, streaming. You can buy it as well. I know who I am. And uh, yeah, you can find show dates and all that over there. But this was a blast. Yay. Yeah. Follow Damon. Listen to his album. Um, you can follow this podcast at tell me anything pod. Follow me at Teresa Lee bot on Instagram and that's it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to you can tell me anything. You can tell me anything is a comedic podcast created and produced by Teresa Lee on the hoo ha ha podcast network. The hoo ha ha team is Ashley McAtee, Audrey Povar, Maggie Reed Austin, Cardi Assad, and Stephanie Binot. The theme song for this podcast was created by Cody Johnston. The outro music was written by Shipwreck Sailor. And the Hoo Ha Ha app can be found in the Apple Store to stream your favorite comedy series and laugh out loud podcasts by the funniest woman in comedy. To contact this podcast specifically, you can email tellmeanythingpod at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at tellmeanythingpod. Thank you.